modern fighters have a big problem. And despite decades of research, development, and technical innovation, the solution has yet to be implemented. A single fighter aircraft costs over $100 million, meaning losing just one can have strategic consequences. And that's not including the pilot. Other than the obvious tragedy of losing a warfighter, the training alone to develop a basic wingman takes years and comes with a cost well into the tens of millions of dollars. Publicly, there have been at least nine accidents because of this critical flaw, but the real total is likely far greater. However, there's a savior on the horizon, and it's not what you might expect. My name is Hazard Lee. I was an active duty fighter pilot for the US Air Force. First flying the F-16 before moving on to the latest fifth gen fighter, the F-35. I've spent many hours in the cockpit of these aircraft, both in training and during combat missions. And it turns out that one of the simplest tasks is also one of the most dangerous. Fighter aircraft represent the pinnacle of engineering. These aircraft, they can fly over twice the speed of sound, that's about 1500 miles an hour. They can pull over nine Gs, nine times the force of gravity. That means I weigh 200 pounds, 230 with my gear on. That's over 2,000 pounds of force just crushing me into the seat so I can outturn the adversary. The sensors are equally amazing. So they can see out into the horizon. They pump all that data into my helmet. So it's a true augmented reality helmet. I see diamonds over all the bad guys, circles over all the good guys. And even on the ground, I can see troops moving around. The cockpits are equally amazing, so there's no extra fat. Everything is optimized for the pilot's situational awareness. Even the space between my legs is filled with instruments. This means that it's great for my awareness. However, there's no bathroom in these aircraft. Although most of our training missions are only an hour to an hour and a half long, you can hold it for that. In combat, it can be significantly longer. So when I was flying missions in Afghanistan, our average sortie length was five hours. Sometimes it would go well beyond that. Same thing for bringing the jets in country, so we'd have to fly it from the US into Afghanistan. Those double digit hour missions with a tanker took a long time. So this means that while you can hold it for a training mission, you can't do that in combat. And even if you could, as we'll see later, the results could be fatal. This isn't a new problem. After World War I, engineers experimented with the idea of adding bathrooms. The first that included it was the 1921 Caproni 60, but it crashed on its second flight. In 1934, a British flying boat was fitted with a toilet that was open to the air, but when the lid was lifted, the airflow produced a whistling noise that led to the aircraft being nicknamed the Whistling Shit House. During World War II, bomber crews carried buckets with seat covers, while fighter pilots used relief tubes consisting of a funnel attached to a hose that led to the outside of the aircraft. The problem was these new devices were awkward to use and would often become frozen and blocked in the extreme cold at high altitude. We've come a long way since the days of World War II. Today we have the Piddle Pack, a more modern solution to that centuries old problem. But it's not exactly the savior we mentioned earlier. More on that later. So the Piddle Pack is a bag filled with absorbent beads. So you can see, as soon as you have to go, you unwrap this thing. Now you have to find a time when you're less busy. I don't say not busy because you're always doing something when you're flying a fighter. First thing you do is call Racehorse over the radio. That lets everybody else know to not bug you if you're the flight lead or if you're the wingman for your flight lead not to maneuver abruptly into you. You then unwrap this thing, you loosen up your straps, you have to break the seal in here, and then the F-16 cockpit, it reclines back 30 degrees, so you almost have to get up and squat doing this thing. It obviously is a lot tougher if we're wearing an anti-exposure dry suit, which is the case for most pilots flying when they're flying over large bodies of water or in the cold. After that, we have a, a Gatorade bottle to go ahead and test this. So you then have to unzip. Most of these flight suits have zippers that unstrap from the bottom. And then you go into the piddle pack. Now the F-16 has a very old autopilot. So you're pretty much having to hand fly this the entire time. And when you have to go, you really have to go. So typically you're gonna have to transition into a second piddle pack all while you're flying this aircraft. The beads then turn into a gel. You roll it up, the first one, transition to the second one, and then stick this over here by your helmet bag, get back to flying your intercept. So obviously this is a difficult process. It gets even tougher when you have a anti-exposure dry suit on, you have your survival vest, you have your M9 pistol. Unfortunately, we've lost a lot of pilots during this process. 
Publicly, there have been at least nine fatal crashes where a primary contributing factor was the pilot losing situational awareness and either crashing into another aircraft or the ground because of this. And while all this is difficult for men, for women, it's significantly worse. It's so bad that I've known several of them that have decided to wear diapers instead. Today I have with me one of the most experienced fighter pilots out there, Billy Flynn. He served as the senior F-35 test pilot for Lockheed Martin. He's also spent over 40 years flying fighters. So Billy, you look at this as a human performance problem, right? Yeah, I really see this as matching the human's capability with the amazing fighter jets that we're flying. And what we learned over time is hydrating ourselves in the, in the airplane is something that we don't pay attention to. In fact, we cheat the system. We don't hydrate on purpose because it's so cumbersome, it's so awkward to do that. And the effect is that with just 3% dehydration, we lose 50% of our capability to pull G. We're that much more susceptible to blacking out, doing aggressive maneuvering. And we've lost dozens of pilots over time because of that. They black themselves out and not woken up before they hit the ground. We wouldn't climb a mountain without having enough water Gatorade with us. We would never play football, play hockey. We wouldn't even go to the gym without water or Gatorade with us. Yet fighter pilots for decades have gone into jets to fly long duration, tough combat sorties and, and cheated the system and not hydrated. I can attest to that. When I was flying combat missions, I wouldn't drink water for an hour beforehand. And that was not just a convenience thing when flying, but when you're dealing with troops in contact, you wanna be you know, as focused as you can trying to support those troops. And so that means less bathroom breaks. So I would tactically dehydrate myself, which uh, clearly isn't good for my performance. So it's not just physical, it's the mental acuity. It's the cognitive capabilities that we're sacrificing because we're not hydrating properly. We fly long duration missions. At the peak of the mission, when our, we're supposed to be concentrating and focusing on our task in combat, we're the weakest mentally. So also the F-35 presents a new challenge, is that correct? Well, it really does. This amazing $100 million jet comes with a very awkward ejection seat and strap-in system that makes it impossible to use a piddle pack without completely unstrapping from the ejection seat. Well, let's go look at that cockpit. All right, so why does the F-35 present a new challenge? Well, the F-35 with this new ejection seat has an elaborate set of straps to use to strap ourselves in, and it's a lot harder to get into it, but also impossible to imagine using a piddle pack with a big a buckle in the middle like this and all these comp complex straps as we strap in. So the only way to use a system now is to unstrap completely after we've saved our ejection seat, undo all of this buckle system, take care of business, and then strap all the way back in and then rearm the ejection seat. That's, that's five or seven minutes when we're not attached to anything flying near supersonic speeds. It's so easy to imagine horrible things happening because we're no longer attached to the ejection seat. So is this a problem the Air Force has been looking into? Well, it is. The Air Force has done research for decades developing a hands-off autonomous in-flight bladder relief system so that pilots don't have to default to piddle packs or more, more importantly, so that they can feel that they can hydrate properly when they fly. And the system that's been developed and now being fielded in the Air Force, Navy and Marine Corps is called Skydrate. Now we have a system that when we have to, we can pee and have it all captured safely away from our bodies and let us continue the mission and focus on what we're supposed to be doing, which is going into combat, into harm's way and doing our job properly. All the lessons that have been learned with previous systems have been incorporated into this generation of in-flight bladder relief. So here's what it does. It has a detector in the system to detect the saline content, the salt content of the urine. That activates an automatic pump that pumps the urine away from male and female pilots and deposits it into a collection bag. For us men, we wear a cup like, you, like we did playing hockey or baseball catchers, uh, connects to this system that comes out of our flight suit and then through a, set, a series of hoses into a collection bag. And the pump works automatically or if we needed to, we can manually activate it. And then, so as, as a pilot, when I'm flying, how do I operate this? You pee when you, when you have to. The system automatically pulls the urine away from the body and puts it into this bag here, hands-free. So you and I are still flying our jets. So you don't have to do anything? Correct, you don't have to do anything. The pump 
pumps faster than we can pee. The bags hold more than we could possibly fill. The systems, whether they're switches or whether they're batteries, have all been improved so that they're foolproof now. So I know this has been fielded, what, Air Force-wide? What's, what's the feedback been? Well, it's been fielded through the Air Force, Marine Corps, and Navy, and has had amazing feedback from pilots, and especially, by the way, females. Well, I know our pacing threat is China, so I've seen some of those missions. They're going to be extreme duration missions. You can't tactically dehydrate on that. So what are your thoughts about using this in the future? Well, think about it. We're going to be going a long way from home, strapped in our jets. We're going to need to hydrate properly. We're actually going to need to eat along the way. We're going to need to be as physically and mentally as sharp as could be. And that means that there's no more tactical dehydration. We need to hydrate properly throughout. And a system like Skydrate is going to allow us to relieve ourselves and stop the cheating that led to the dehydration that we've been doing for so many decades. And you've actually flown with this system in F-35. I have, and I ferry jets across the ocean with this system, strapped in with a big immersion suit on and Arctic flying gear over top of that, where there would have been no chance to even imagine using a pedal pack. And I've used this system for long duration missions, and I'm a convert. I know it works now. Well, I know I'm a minimalist when I fly, but I'm, I'm convinced on paper, so let's give this thing a shot in the air. It's your turn. All right. All right, so I've had a uh, couple cups of coffee. Just gonna drink this water and we'll be ready to go. All right, here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna make sure this thing is set up. We got green, that means good. Really don't have to do anything else, so all the tubes are connected. I think we're gonna go for a record here. If we can uh, do a barrel roll, might be the first time everybody's uh, ever took a piss while doing a barrel roll. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, it's working. Let's do a barrel roll. Here we go. All right. Yeah, still going. Yeah. yeah, this thing works. Let's do a uh, out here. This would be if we're kinematically defeating a uh, missile shot at us. All right, yeah, that was nothing. Uh, days of uh, permissive environments like Iraq and Afghanistan are over. You don't have time to do that when you're in a uh, SA-20, SA-21 Mez. Those guys flying in uh, Ukraine right now definitely don't have five minutes to uh, save the seat, unstrap, uh, go into a piddle pack, so I think this is huge, especially as we, uh, especially as we transition to uh, the Pacific Theater with long ranges in the F-35. All right, let's get back to work. <laughs> 